I get a fair number of questions regarding world building. And partly that's because I have a world building podcast. So like that's a topic I talk about a lot. And so people ask me questions about it. But I thought it would be fun to break down sort of the basic idea of how I world build because it's a little bit different than most advice you're going to get. If you're new to this channel, my name is Seth. I'm a full-time author with over 20 books published, and I make these videos because I remember how confusing it was when I started writing, and I don't want you to be stuck in that same place. I have a little bit of a contrarian view, and this view has developed in a large part thanks to my co-host James and the community at the Worldcraft Club Discord. I'll put a link down below so that you can check that out if you're interested in talking about world building with other people. But like I said, I have a bit of a contrarian view on this. So my goal for this video is to sort of break down how I think about world building, but then also actually give you an example of me doing it on the fly because I think it's a super fun process. This is a process that has been developed over the last four years by the Worldcraft Club, which is a podcast and community. Again, link in the description. So let's get right into it. How do we create a world for our novel? Well, there are really two basic steps. First, you come up with a core concept, and then you come up with boundaries. And that's it. Now, some of you are probably saying, Seth, hold on a second. What about all the other details? What about the races? What about the magic system? What about everything else that goes into the world? And I'm telling you, all you need is a core concept and boundaries. So just stick with me here as I talk you through this. So the first thing is that core concept. What is a core concept? It's really just a unifying theme that's going to run through the center of your work. In fact, you might consider it the backbone of your world. This is the thing that's going to help everything else work together. Why? Because everything in the world is going to be based on that core concept. Now, a couple of important notes. Any core concept you come up with should be impactful to you. You should feel like it's cool. You should feel like it's good. You should want to explore the world that it describes. The second thing is that you want it to be short. We're not talking about a paragraph here. We're talking about a simple sentence. That's it. One simple sentence. Now, it might take you a little while to work through different options to come up with a core concept. So, for instance, I might say, okay, I want a desert world, okay? I want it to have a sort of like post-apocalyptic feel, but with pockets of utopia. And I don't want like fake utopia, I want like actual utopia. And all the people in the post-apocalyptic parts, I want them to be trying to find their way into utopia. All right, so if that's my idea, I might come up with a core concept that says something like, and I'm just making this up off the top of my head, um, a blistering sea of sand that is broken up by a few dozen soaring mountain oasis. Oasis? Oasises? Oasi? I don't know what the plural for that word is, so just imagine it. But let's, let's actually change that a little bit because that's not quite the feeling that I think I want. Let's say this. A blistering sea of sand broken up by mountain oasis guarded by masked cults. I think that's what I want. That's a world that I want to explore. A blistering sea of sand with mountain oasises that house masked cults that guard them. That's a world I could explore. That's a, that's a world I could write a story in. In fact, I might write a story in. That's, that's kind of cool. But the point is that if that's my core concept, then everything that I add to the world should come back to that. Does it fit in either my blistering sea of sand or my, my mountain oasis? Does it interact with the masked cults that guard them? It gives a sense of the 
difficulty and danger and mystery of the world. And there are a million stories that could be set there. But as long as all of the details that I come up with come back to that core concept, that feeling that you got when I described that scene is going to be present. So we create this core concept because it gives us a unified feeling or experience for our readers. That builds immersion. But that's not quite enough. We also need to draw our boundaries around it. And that's sort of the second piece of this. So what are my boundaries? Let's just come up with some. Let's say no magic. There's no spells. There's no anything like that. Now, what there could be is things like non-magical alchemy. We could have people who are putting together potions that do different mystical things. It's not magic, but it, they could be giving people increased speed or increased strength or the ability to go without water for a really long time. But the boundary is no magic. Anything else is fair game, but just no magic. Now let's come up with another boundary. I, I typically like to do two or three of these. Let's say that travel is done on a swift camel-like beast, but they pull carts. So it's more like a chariot situation, right? So the beings that inhabit this world, and we haven't defined what they are, they could be anything. They ride on these chariots designed for crossing these deserts. And then let's add another boundary. Let's add a technology boundary. Basic gunpowder exists, but that's it. There's, no, there's been no advances in technology because they only have, or because they don't have, let's say, water power. But maybe they're on the cusp of developing it. Maybe that's what our story is about. Maybe that's one of the primary conflicts in this world. So let's, let's take a step back and let's review what we've done. We have a world that is a blistering sea of sand with mountain oases guarded by masked cults. We have some boundaries for it. There's no magic in the setting. The travel is all done on chariots pulled by camels. And the technology is sort of early Renaissance basic gunpowder. That's all you need for your world to get started. We could write a million kinds of stories. We could write a story about a member of the masked cult who's curious about these people who come up the mountain to trade or on pilgrimages, curious about the world outside, and somehow stumbles off the mountain and into this harsh and unforgiving desert. We could write a story about a member of a caravan who gets the opportunity to stay for a little while in this mountain oasis and is desperate to remain there and the twists and turns as they struggle to find their place among the members of this cult. We could tell a story about the cults fighting against each other as they struggle for priority for the merchant groups that take the goods from one mountain to another. There are so many stories that you could write. You could simply change one boundary let's say the no magic, and all of a sudden open up a whole new universe of possibilities. But I hope you can see how this works. As long as we keep to our core concept of this blistering sea of sand and our mountain oasis with masked cults guarding them, that feeling is going to remain. We'll be able to keep our story, and more importantly, the experience for our reader consistent. And this is actually the process that I use for every single one of my books. I start with my core concept so that I understand the narrative feeling that I want to give my reader. I add my boundaries so I know where not to go with the story. And then I start exploring and I add details as I go. But I'd love to hear you try it. In the comments down below, I want you to give me a world. Core concept, two to three boundaries. See where your imagination takes you. I hope you find some value in this. Like I said before at the beginning of this, totally not an ad. Check out the Worldcraft Club podcast. There will be a link in the description below.